What's going on, family? It is not a live video today. We're pre-recording. So y'all getting 4K quality in the Mercury retrograde. Ain't that about a bitch. That's beautiful. So that's what we're going to talk about. It's the Mercury retrograde in Libra. And we get Mercury retrograde about three to four times a year. So it's very important to be aware of this phenomenon and not scared of this phenomenon. This isn't a digression. I'm fucking tired of people taking a reactive approach to astrology. If you have heard my message, my narrative doesn't change, man. Everything is energy and everything outside of you is for your use. So the moment you forget that shit, you become a victim to your circumstance that you probably created. And I won't let y'all do that. To, 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 to tell the truth, it's not up to me. It's up to you what you do with your energy and your time and your space. So... Thanks for tuning in today. We are out in the park. Oh, baby, it's beautiful. I'm having a good day. I'm not gonna lie, man. My energy's been whack today because the healing doesn't stop. And it's a non-linear process. Sometimes whenever you heal, you feel worse before you feel better, you know? So I've been on purge mode, man. <laughs> I'm proud to say I live my life very intentionally. But that being said, you got to balance the work with the rest and the relaxation. So that's kind of what I'm doing today. I'm getting it right. And I got nothing but time and space in between me and my goals. So ain't nothing to worry about. So let's talk about Mercury. Let's talk about retrogrades. Let's talk about what Mercury retrograde is about. And then what you can expect for the Libra Mercury retrograde. And then for the retrogrades that you're going to encounter in the future. Because this isn't the first or last one that you're going to encounter. This has been happening before you even knew about astrology. And this is why the fuck it pisses me off, man. Is because some people couldn't even tell you where the moon is but they'll tell you it's mercury retrograde because they read it on facebook or something and they take a reactive approach and whenever they have problems in their life circumstances or situations that are uncomfortable they just blame it on mercury retrograde they don't even know what the fuck mercury is what it does or how it affects you but they're still gonna blame it on everything in their life and credit and blame are the same things so if you're gonna fucking blame mercury you better give mercury some goddamn credit damn it and Mercury's my chart ruler traditionally, so that's Mercury coming through me, bitch. I'm not fucking having this shit. Ignorance, man. Willful fucking ignorance. The information is in front of us, but we willfully choose to ignore this shit, man. So before we even get into this, man, I'm telling y'all, because it's the Mercury retrograde, I'm not doing any chart readings right now because I have a lot of projects to catch up on. So if you need the astrological guide from me, my astrological course, Simplified Astrology, is $5 for the retrograde, so don't sleep on it. Just grab it now, or you can get my book and get the free ebook and audiobook. So I'll literally read my book to you before you get it. I don't have time for excuses, man. We function on results over here. So look, man, Mercury is the first planet away from the sun. And <laughs> very quickly, we're going to have to talk about the principle of correspondence. As above, so below. So within, so without, everything is energy. Therefore, everything is connected. You were told everything is energy when you were in science class as a kid, but you were too young to really understand the meaning. Knowledge, left brain logic, is not the same as intuition, experience, and wisdom. And my Pluto and Sag will tell you all about that, man. We're, we're drowning in information, starving for wisdom. So shit, man. Everything is connected. So when you look up at the sky and the stars and the planets and the moon and all this stuff, you need to understand you're looking at yourself, my friend. I could just end it right here, man. <laughs> that's, that's it. I could literally just end the video. So here's the thing, man. When we do astrology, modern astrology is really aimed at dissecting the personality and the characterology. So this is kind of new, man. And we're getting better and better at this because it's the age of Aquarius, the age of astrology, the age of Uranus, Saturn and Uranus. You know, they say there's nothing new under the sun and that's true, but does that mean humanity always knew about everything underneath the sun? Not really. So that's the great work that we're doing right now. So when you look at the planets within your astrology chart, you need to understand you're compartmentalizing parts of yourself. So again, this is why it makes no goddamn sense for you to blame Mercury retrograde when you don't even know how the fuck your Mercury works and how you use your mind, your intellect. And you don't know the difference between your Mercury and your Venus or your sun and your moon. Why the fuck are you trying to blame Mercury for shit? Because you probably experience it and that's the only logical way to justify it. Again, we're talking about Mercury's energy still. 
but man. Some people blame Mercury retrograde when Mercury is direct. And that doesn't make any fucking sense. Some of y'all do that. I promise you. And I want to say really quick, thank you to everybody subscribing to the channel. There's a shit ton of you guys. And it's taken me a long time to get to this level. But it's been exponential. I'm telling you, it took so long to get 100. It took me really long to get to like 150. And then, oh shit, once I hit TikTok, things have been blowing up. So I really appreciate you guys so much. If you would drop a like and then leave a comment. At some point during this video, I would so appreciate it. Or if you hate this shit, leave a dislike. But I need some interaction for the algorithm, okay? So we're compartmentalizing the system of your soul, the solar system. That's what the human body is. And you have more than just a physical body. Read about it, man. Read about your aura. So when we take the planets and sun and the moon, and then we look at them within their zodiac position in your chart and their house position as well, we can get a better idea of who you are and where you play out what energies, okay? Because let's say you're a Taurus sun. You've probably known that your whole life because your birthday was in May or um, late April, you know? So that's cool. But until you pull that astrology chart, you won't be able to see that moon sign or see the house that your sun is in and be able to know where these parts of your personality play out and see the aspects, angles, and geometry between them, okay? So when we get to the sun, you know that's what you see, your vision. You can only see me right now because there's sunlight reflecting off these trees. You got what I'm saying? So the sun is gonna show you what you do, what you act on, what you're aware of, and your driving force, that solar plexus energy in the body. So the sun is the center of the solar system. You get what I'm saying? And the moon is gonna be that personal, closer body to earth, way more important than your sun, how you feel, how you react and respond based on the way you receive water. You know the moon pulls tides too. Principle of correspondence, as above, so below. Y'all hear me, but some of you don't fucking hear me. So then we get to Mercury, the first planet after the sun. We need to understand, based on Mercury having about an 88 day orbit, going so fucking fast, based on Earth's perspective of Mercury, Mercury can only be about 28 degrees away from the sun on the zodiac wheel. And when I'm saying wheel, let me remind you, that's 360. So the thing is, when we talk about your sun sign, you need to know there's three versions of every sun sign. Technically, there's a million versions because it's so hard to find a duplicatable natal chart. It takes about 25,000 years to get a duplicatable natal chart. So let's say you're an Aries. Because Mercury can only be 28 degrees away from the sun, if you're an Aries sun, you either have a Pisces Mercury, you either have an Aries Mercury, or you have a Taurus Mercury. It's one of the three. So that's a good way to be able to distinguish those three versions based on Mercury of the sun signs. So what does Mercury do? And that's why I prefaced, man, by telling you about how close it is. It's very close to the sun. It's very close to the conscious awareness and the expression of our driving force. But you would correlate Mercury more to the throat chakra. That being said, these planets orbiting your aura don't just sit in one spot. They're going to fly throughout the aura. And what you need to know about Mercury is that this is the mind. This is the intellect, the left brain, the logic, communication. And communication can be nonverbal also. So you need to think, that, think about that as well. So Mercury shows you how you use your left brain, how you make sense out of things, how you communicate. Intellect is the key word, man. And what's interesting to say is everything that you can see, for the most part, that's not natural, was created by an idea. Cardinal air, that ace of swords energy, you know? This lighter, this fucking cut on this topaz, the necklace, my clothes, all of it, man. Somebody even thought about nose rings before they were able to like bend this metal to make that a thing, you know what I'm saying? So intellect and human ingenuity is pretty freaking sweet. And truth be told, humans aren't the only people that use, humans are the only people, I guess you could say, that use Mercury, but they're not the only beings that use Mercury, okay? We need to stay in this solar system right quick because I'm about to trail off, but Mercury is gonna show you how you think and communicate and speak. So within your chart, if you look at the constellation, the sign that Mercury's in, it's gonna show you how your intellect is filtered through. So like if you're Aries Mercury, that's cardinal fire, more passionate, driven, Mars-like communication, you know? So you may have arguments or hard lessons when you talk to Earth Mercuries like Capricorn or Cancer or maybe even Libra being the opposition. 
you know? So basically, the sign position of Mercury within your chart is going to show you the flavor in which you communicate and think. The house position of Mercury in your chart is going to show you what sphere of life that you spend a lot of time thinking about or where your thoughts unconsciously go based on that being the spot Mercury was in when you jumped in the physical body. Okay, that's your blueprint that you carry through this experience. So what you need to know about a retrograde is this is nothing more than an optical illusion. And this happens about four times a year with Mercury and there's other planets. And I get a little bit fucking frustrated with people that just pretend to be into astrology and just use it as self-sabotage, escapism, something to blame their bullshit on, or just something to make them look like they're smart. You know, if you're genuinely into the astrology, that kind of reflects in the practice and your thirst for the truth. You don't feel the need to prove shit or show people that astrology is the truth because it just is life. You know what I'm saying? So some of y'all don't really like it, but I'm encouraging you if you feel called the fuck out, take it more seriously, man. This shit is a game. You don't gotta be like racking your brain about astrology. And I truly recommend that you pursue the meaning in your astrology. And that means when you stop having fucking fun with it, take a break. Because if it's not fun to connect to you, it's probably not connecting to you. AKA, you're not making sense out of it. You're not getting useful information. You might be like way into house systems and looking at the differences between Vedic and sidereal and tropical. And that can be valuable if you need it for your intellect or whatever. But if you're not already using the chart or whatever, that can just be too much information. That can be minutia. You get what I'm saying? That can be your Mercury going retrograde by itself, you know? So um, keep that in mind. And some of y'all have Mercury retro in the natal chart, which we'll talk about in a second. But basically what you need to know about a retrograde is that Mercury is not the only thing that does this. The only two things that won't go retrograde in our solar system is going to be the sun and the moon, okay? Because these are gravitational objects. They're all gravitational objects, but you understand we're rotating around the sun and the moon's rotating around the earth. So if those go retrograde, we're in fucking trouble, y'all. We better watch the fuck out. So whenever... Let me go back to the principle of correspondence. Everything is energy and we're all connected. So we're all receiving the influences and the geometry of the trains that's moving around the sun at all times in space, okay? So sometimes planets will go retrograde. And what does this mean? It means they're not direct. When we're going the way that we always go, which we always go, that's the key word. We're going direct in the direction we're going. So I said this is an optical illusion because no planets are really going to reverse their direction and turn around and spin. That doesn't make any fucking sense. There's so much momentum. And momentum is the word. I almost said inertia, but that's the opposite. There's momentum. And this shit doesn't stop, man. Motion. Get my book, simplifiedastrology.com. Go jump in that book and I'll tell you all of it, man. Because I'm not about to go read my whole book on this video. But we're receiving the energy. So at some time in space, because of the Earth is a different space between the sun than Mercury is and Venus is going to be at a different space and Saturn's going to be further out, Pluto's going to be further out, blah, 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 blah. Sometimes, based on Earth's perspective of the zodiac wheel, it's going to look like planets reverse their direction. They never do, but this is an optical illusion from Earth. So what the fuck does this mean, y'all? What does this do for people on Earth? Energy is everything. So it's a process of giving and receiving at all times in space. So whenever the planets look like they're reversing, and we can look at the ephemeris and check the degree and look how it's going backwards. We're not going to receive energy as directly as we did right before the retrograde started. That's common sense. So let's peel back the layers through the principle of correspondence. When we don't have new energy being received from these planets, it's time for us to use our own energy within our solar system, our Mercury. And what's funny, some of y'all, oh, man, some of y'all were in my comments on TikTok, not you during the retrograde. And I'm like, bitch, what do you mean the retrograde? Mercury retro hasn't even started. There's seven planets retro. You probably didn't even know that. What the fuck do you mean the retrograde? Bro, what? So we're not receiving new energy. So it's time to deal with energy within our bodies. It's time to slow the fuck down because things in the external world are not moving as fast. That's the key to a retrograde. So it's important to know what planet is retro and what sign it's going within. And then obviously the transiting aspects and then how it hits your, your natal chart. That sounds like a lot, but I'm telling y'all, it's really simple. And if it's not simple yet, that's why you need to go to simplifiedastrology.com and jump in the course or grab the book. So 
when Mercury, the planet of intellect, thoughts, and communication goes retrograde, everything built out of the intellect slows down. Everything. This is the internet, your cell phone provider, your TV, Facebook and Instagram just went down. I didn't even know because I've been so fucking busy. <laughs> I literally didn't know. But yeah, technology can fuck up. You can be like at the grocery store and you're like, why the fuck do I have to swipe my card like four times? This doesn't make any sense, you know, because the intellect, I'm going to show you, I'm a man, I'm going to hook you all up today. So you better like that fucking video. So <laughs> it's time to slow down, reorganize and not be scared. Again, it's not, it's my opinion. Good and bad is not objective, but it's not good to take a, re to take a reactive uh, approach to your astrology be proactive man don't forget that you have your own fucking mind and this shit is something that you created i'm telling y'all some of y'all forgot that you were the fucking magician pull that card out and know that you're looking at mercury you're looking at hermes damn it pay the fuck attention guys <sighs> so whenever mercury goes retrograde oftentimes it can be more difficult to communicate we can expect sometimes miscommunications arguments Sometimes plans may fall through and need to be reorganized, restructured, because even creating a plan is using intellect and communication and logic. I'm telling y'all, logic is the theme. So again, to take a proactive approach rather than a reactive approach, you can slow the fuck down. You can make your own ideas make sense to yourself before you express them. You can ask more questions rather than making assumptions. You can go get your fucking car serviced, get an oil change, do preventative maintenance to make sure that you're all right. I don't fucking subscribe to this don't travel dynamic. That's stupid as fuck. Y'all, last year, during the June retrograde, I was in Mexico in a global pandemic, man. Y'all saw it. There's videos on the channel. You can check them out. You know, don't let astrology take your power. If you're losing power from astrology, you're doing it the fuck wrong. Astrology is about self-awareness and that gives you responsibility and that gives you power. But some of y'all aren't responsible enough to take it. So I'm waking you up. Wake the fuck up. I love you. Smell the fucking coffee, bro. Shit. <laughs> you know, I want to say no judgment, but I'm judging the fuck out of you. My Libra moon can't make this video without using my judgment, but I don't want you to feel criticized. Okay. I truly care and love you. So that's why the fuck I'm doing this. I didn't have to make this video. And the way I felt energetically, I was like, you know, man, it'd be easier for me not to. It'd be easier just to go home and go to bed. But hey, let's talk about Mercury retrograde. So you want to service your car, service your vehicle. Mercury rules things like communication and travel as well. Again, everything intellect-based. You know, we needed intellect to build cars and planes and trains. So it's about travel. It's about communication. This is the air element. You get what I'm saying? And air, metaphysically speaking, makes connections. And it can make division as well. It's, again, left brain and logical. That's what air and earth is. Fire, water, right brain, intuitive. Okay? So with air, we're making connections. We're drawing that direction. This is about being direct or creating logic, squares. Man, I can't read my book for you. You guys need to read it. I'm telling you. This is mathematics. That's what Mercury rules in many shapes and forms. Building anything requires communication of logic to the external world. So this is building. This is plans. This is travel. This is logic. And that's about it. These are so broad. They cover so much. So part of me is like, damn, Mark, did you say it all? Yeah. But you just got to peel back the layers to it. Absolutely. So let's talk about this Mercury retrograde. This is in the sign of Libra. Okay. Okay. So Libra is cardinal air. This is air on air. So this Mercury retrograde is hitting a lot of people a lot harder than the regular ones do. And to be honest, man, I love Mercury retrograde. I really love it. But by me being a Libra moon and having Virgo rising 17 degrees, you know, I got a lot of that Libra constellation in my first and second house. This one is hitting me pretty personally, but I need this shit, man. And regardless if you need it or not, you kind of do need it because we're going through it. So you get with it or get without it, you know? But this is cardinal air, creating cardinal, initiating cardinal air deals again with thinking and communicating, creating logic in some way, shape or form. 
So Libra is the traditional ruler of the seventh house. It's Venus ruled. It's about our relationships creating balance, which is equal forces in opposite direction by definition. You know, so this is creating new ideas, creating words, thinking and talking to people, you know. So we're already going through Libra season. Sun is in Libra. Our attention on the planet is on the cardinal air aspect and relationships in general, man. In Northern Hemisphere, this is fall. So it's getting colder. Leaves are crunching out. People are like, damn, I'd love to have a boyfriend. I'd love to have a girlfriend, you know, pretty freaking sweet. So you already know bro's married. It's pretty awesome. Man, I'm having a good day every fucking day. But the theme is balance in our lives between the people that we live through and live with and connect to or the circumstances and situations that we encounter. That's what Libra is about, you know? Virgo being that mutable earth element, things get more peaceful around Libra season, you know? And that's the whole planet. If you're in the Southern hemisphere, it's just gonna be a different temperament, different temperature, you know? But the sun is still transiting through the Libra constellation. So this means our thoughts about balance are also going under revision. We're revisiting the past. So that's the thing that's also the theme about a retrograde. And we need to com apply this to every retrograde and not just Mercury. Because I want you guys to know if you're watching this video around the time it was uploaded, and you can check the ephemeris if not, but Mercury is retro, Jupiter's retrograde, Saturn's retrograde, Chiron is retro. Uranus is retrograde, Neptune's retro, Pluto went direct yesterday. So it's been a party, man. Saturn goes direct on the 10th, Mercury on the 19th. Ooh, buddy. I think, ne I think Neptune stations too, but this is the year of shadow work, y'all, is what you need to understand, is that we're not receiving energy as quickly as we usually do, based on damn near every planet <laughs> going backwards and Michael Jackson moonwalking on the zodiac wheel, okay? So when this happens, y'all, we need to keep in mind everything is energy and cause and effect is a real thing. And we can really attribute that to Saturn and time and just letting energy fall into place. But when planets go retrograde, the past catches up with us because again, everything that we send out in the universe will reverberate as energy and then we'll come back at some time, some way, some shape or some form. But when it's retrograde, it's very easy to because again, we're not getting that new external energy. We're dealing with the stuff that we're doing on the inside. And this is why your ex comes back during, Mex dur during Mercury retrograde or you're the fucking one blowing up their phone. You get what I'm saying? Because you're like, damn, past communication, I would like to communicate. And especially with this one, I don't like to um, digress and tell people sometimes predictions and stuff because sometimes it can be disempowering. It's, I think, a lot better to live in the fucking present and then try our best with pattern recognition. Some people go the opposite way and try to predict the future before they understand what the fuck's going on right now. But with Mercury retrograde and Libra, this is one of those retrogrades where you better watch the fuck out for connecting with your ex just because it feels better to be partnered in some way, shape, or form. You need to look at the ideals and principles of the reality that we're living in. And I broke down um, the new moon because we just went through the new moon. So I went through transits as well. Some of y'all got Pluto in some hard-hitting houses and, you know, if you don't really know the other things in the solar system, you might be inclined to um, rock yourself to sleep based on ignorance, you know? So that's as simple as I can put it. But in either way, if there's a partner or not in your life, you're creating balance within your life. Cardinal air, new ways of thinking about things, new ways of relating to things, new ways of communicating with ourselves in general. It's time to slow down and make things make sense because this is the air element, you know? And it's the time to communicate and not make it, to not make assumptions in your life. Ask for what the fuck you want. And because Libra is the theme right now, I need you guys to know, just because you found a way to deal with bullshit doesn't mean things are balanced or fair. Maybe rewind that, or maybe I'll just say it again. Just because you found a way to deal with bullshit doesn't mean it's fair or balanced. This goes to the habits that you indulge in and the people that you keep around you, you know, and the way that you think in general, man. And I want to take it a little bit deeper, man. Just because things make sense to you and you can communicate, cardinal air them to other people and they can agree with you doesn't mean that you guys are right. You can be so fucking right that you're wrong and you fucked up the Libra scale, man. Balance is equal forces. So check that shit out before you wreck that shit out, man. Every one of you has Libra in your chart. 
If you don't believe me, you better look between fucking Virgo and Scorpio. You're going to find it right there, man. Why would I lie to you? So check that shit out, man. So I also talked about talking about natal retrogrades. And that's a whole video in itself. But when you have natal Mercury retrograde, you're probably the type to take your time in your thoughts. And you might also be the type that actually takes longer to grasp logical concepts. And that's not a good or bad thing. It's just a thing, you know? You don't want to disempower yourself through astrology. So the moment you ask yourself, is it good to have Mercury retrograde in the natal or is it bad to have... Wrong fucking questions, man. You're, fuck... you're fucking up just because you're asking the wrong questions. And your questions determine your outcome. They heavily influence it. And the quality of your life is determined by the quality of your questions. So ask better ones. Ask, how do I use Mercury retrograde in the natal chart? By slowing the fuck down and understanding that you take your time. And that can be a good thing better than a bad thing. Again, it's objectively neither. But who cares how fast you can think and communicate if you don't even know what the fuck you're talking about or you don't understand things? I'm getting the image of like scoring for the opposite team or you start the race, you run backwards. Congratulations, man. You were the fuck you're the fastest one to get last place. Congratulations. That's amazing. You get no prize for that, you know? <laughs> so damn. Take your time and don't think that you're stupid if you got Mercury retrograde in the natal chart. Doesn't make sense, man. That's literally what it is, is sometimes things don't make sense. You know? You can read about it more. But everything we talked about with the past would also influence these people with Mercury retrograde natal charts. As in, taking their time to think things over, at worst overthinking, at worst being stuck in the past, you know? But that's not end all be all, man. You go through different transits and, you know, you'll still have different effects through Mercury going retrograde and switching signs and ingressing, egressing, doing all that stuff throughout your chart. So apart from that, I want to share some witchcraft with you guys, if you don't mind. So you need to understand everything is energy and they're built out of these four elements, technically five if you count spirit and the quintessence, but it's fire, water, air, earth. When we got air, we're talking about logic and communication. And because it's mercury retrograde, it'd be very nice to work with the air element when your technology starts fucking up. So I want you guys to remember you're a star quite literally because of the principle of correspondence. So why the fuck do you think a pentagram has five points? So check this out, y'all. Every one of these points on the pentagram corresponds to a different element so we've got spirit up at the top i hope this video doesn't flip but on the left top left we have air bottom left we have earth top right we have water and then the bottom right we have fire so basically the pentagram is a symbol of so much some people are like yeah it's protection sure but it's a lot of other things okay based on the way you draw the pentagram has a lot to do with what energy it conveys we have banishing pentagrams that pull energy down and remove that element. And we have invoking pentagrams that pull the element in. So we want to be really hip with the air pentagram right about now, okay? Especially the invoking pentagram. So when your technology's fucked up or you're having a brain fart or you're having an issue, my girlfriend just texted her mind's racing today. Yeah, so if you're going through that shit, what you're going to want to do is either invoke or banish some air. So to invoke the air, you're gonna start from the water, the top right, and you're gonna draw it over to air, move to air, bring it down, up, down, boom, and back up at air. To banish the air, you're gonna start at air. Start at the top left and then go across to water, then bring it back. That just removed the air by invoking water. And to invoke the air, you banish the water. Same shit, you guys see what I'm saying? If your Wi-Fi is fucking up or you can't send a text, I swear, man, imagine drawing that pentagram in your mind's eye and watch how fast you reconnect to the internet don't say mark never did anything for you <laughs> drop a like leave me a comment and go grab that course for five dollars because it's not going to be cheaper and i'll read my book before you get it so get the paperback and i'm gonna sign it don't rewind it don't decline it man i only got a limited amount of first editions left so y'all need to hop on it i love y'all